the Hereford resurgence in America, is that being reflected in bull sales? We've seen an uh, enormous uh, market share shift in the last uh, three to four years uh, for Hereford bulls. And um, what we're seeing is that these Angus commercial operators are st starting to, uh, to evaluate the use of Hereford genetics in their program. And so uh, in the last two years, we've seen an increase of over 30% in prices uh, given for Hereford bulls. We're also seeing more bulls being sold. Uh, this year we saw two sales average over $10,000 um, per head and so um, this resurgence has uh, really built an economic boom under the breed and it's attracting new investors into the business. Modern breeding uh, indicates that we use performance recording uh, as much as we can. Uh, temperament and structure, how do you address those in America? Well, we've asked our, cons our, uh, our customers uh, through surveys across America, the commercial cattlemen, um, what are the traits that you can live, that you can't live without? And there's about three of those. One's disposition. Uh, safety's a real issue on the ranch, and so disposition's critical, and of course, the Hereford breed has a great advantage there. Number two is functionality and structure. Uh, these cattle have to last. They have to be able to, to be functional in tough environment. And the third one's calving ease. Um, they don't have the labor force uh, to go out and uh, assist a cow with calving. And so those are three big ones that are just uncompromising. I mean, we have to stay on top of those in addition to using breeding values and EPDs in our performance program. Structure and temperament, of, uh, you, you indicated, they indicated how they stand in Australia. I think we've done an excellent job here in Australia on disposition. I think that's a breed trait uh, that's global. Uh, for the Hereford breed, uh, and if you look at these big bulls that are moving around, they're athletic, uh, they're striding out, they have big feet, uh, structurally sound, uh, very functional kind of cattle, and, and you can tell there's been a lot of effort from great cowmen uh, in designing these genetics. And uh, could we uh, benefit from a, a, a switch of genetics from uh, U.S. to Australia and from Australia to the U.S.? Oh, I'm certain, uh, you know, bringing outside genetics can always be a good thing. Um, there's tools in both populations that, uh, that each of our countries can utilize and I think over the years that's proven out to be uh, very important to trade genetics over time.